All right. Yep. Well, I've been re uh, reading. I'm almost finished doing the um, the German army. I've just got to. Um, <clears throat> well, I've got quite a bit of infantry divisions left over to pop in, and they're going to all go to the ninth and the eleventh armies here. And I started reading up again on the rules for artillery. I think it's section twenty nine. Per, anyways, if it is, then it would be 29.9 when I went, wait a flippin' minute. This is really great because it's going to uh, work awesome for Operation uh, Umschalten, I do believe is uh, how you say it. It's Operation Shift. This whole thing, I'm trying to get the Germans to do, um, to not get the Russians to know exactly where they're going. In my world, as you can see here, I've got this little artillery unit uh, marker here and an artillery marker here. I put in the, I usually put in where the core HQs are, the army HQs, engineering uh, regiments, artillery brigades, and cavalry. Uh, obviously, and obvious and uh, infantry, but I don't show the strength points. I don't show the specifics, but I'm allowing the enemy to know odds are like they can see where the big artillery is. This is not the little, like, this is the big stuff coming in kind of thing. And this is where, yet again, I'm going to um, kind of scratch, I'm happy, but I'm scratching my head a little bit on what exactly was Dave Schroeder trying to model with uh, se rule section 29.9. And I think it's about, it says, uh, artillery does not, okay, so in normal, every other unit, it seems, has to deal with the fact that if you enter an enemy zone of control, it costs you one extra movement point. And if you leave uh, an enemy zone of control, it costs you one movement point. Anyway, section 29 says that um, artillery can ignore um, entering an, uh, the extra movement point cost for entering an enemy zone of control if there's a friendly unit in that enemy's uh, hex, zone of control hex. I was like, fantastic! That means I can start um, putting my artillery some... There's a lot of woods here, unfortunately, but because that's going to kill me. But um, at least I could move, and the artillery don't move a lot, uh, very quick. But the light artillery for Germans are at a movement factor of four. The siege is three. So that's not too bad. So I moved, up, uh, I moved them as far away as possible. I mean, let, let's be honest. From a Russian perspective, do you honestly believe... I'm going to show you where I'm actually going to truly attack. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I've already mentioned it before. So this was going to be a potential secondary attack. I'm going through with it. When I saw how many uh, supply points I have, holy cow, hold on. <coughs> how many supply points I have and how many strength points and artillery come in here. I can do some, I, can, I think I can deliver a, a real big hammer blow in one area. And if I'm smart enough, starting to clue in about not just looking at this world operationally, you know, I'm mean, looking at other stuff and I just keep hearing about that operational is, which I mean, I know it almost seems self-evident, is the relationship or the connection between the tactical and the strategic. I started trying to like allow my mind to go deeper into that, like what does that truly mean? And, um, you know, and then I started reading about, like, they were looking at Falkenhayn uh, with uh, Vardan and the fact that, yes, uh, you may have had a good operational, um, you know, popping all your artillery. He, you know, started off well. But what was your strategic objective? Uh, like, what were you trying to achieve in the long run? That type of thing. So I'm like, when I looked at here, I'm like, yes, operationally, I'm going after the weakest spot I can see for terrain. I've got my internal lines of communication here so on and so forth. I'm using my advantages operationally. But what are, what are my strategic uh, goals here? Does this fit in with a strategic objective? Not necessarily. I think actually I should still try to go towards Lublin, but then uh, in that area, like it'll, I'll have to show it on a wider map. But then I was like, wait a minute. Remember that in keeping with um, Operation Umschalten, you can also shift some of your forces towards the 11th Army here and go towards uh, Bialyos, uh, uh, Bialyostok, which was uh, one of the things. And I already started piercing them a little bit. So, I, you know what I mean? I can do that a little bit there. So it's not the end of the world. I f did, though, for a f 
bit felt like it's like, ah, oh, you made a strategic uh, mistake just focusing. You know, it's almost like you won the battle, but you're going to lose the war kind of thing. Uh, when I just focus too much on the objectives, uh, on the operational approach uh, to things. That being said, I'm in, and I, like I said, in keeping with uh, Operation Umschalten. I gotta look at the word again just to make sure I'm saying it right. Umschalten, I do believe. Um, is I just, when I, this is weird, and that's why I'm gonna start talking about the modeling here. I'm like, what are you actually trying to model? At first, it's like, oh, because I thought he it, it included uh, entering an enemy zone of control and leaving. But the rule only says entering. It doesn't say anything about leaving. So obviously I still have to pay the penalty extra movement point cost for that. All right. So at first I thought, oh, because it's before and, like before and after, you know, entering and leaving. I thought, oh, maybe he's kind of pseudo modeling that these big artillery pieces are not like right, right up at the front. Obviously they're not. They're like, you know, quite far away. And, but then us, so, you know, therefore, you know, they're able to get in. And I was like, well, yeah, what about leaving? Why can't they, you know, maybe it's because they uh, have, I don't, mm, no, it wouldn't make sense either. I don't, uh, I don't know where he's getting at, but I'm happy because like I said, I can, from a Russian perspective, there's no effing way you're thinking I'm going that, to attack here. Why would you? I'm going to be putting uh, two siege artillery units here and uh, two regular artillery. They've got a movement of four. So let's take a look at this. Remember, I do, I still have to pay for leaving, but not entering. All right. Oh, shit. I don't think I may have done this right. I think I may still have to pay an extra. We'll take a look. I think I screwed up here. We'll just move them over to here, but, uh, okay. It's because of that effing river. So I, okay, so I have to pay an extra, yeah, because this guy's got a movement cost of four and I forgot about this guy. I'll have to move again, shit. If he had a movement, oh well. Oh well, I'm glad I did this video because I probably would have went with it and not remembered. Well, maybe, we'll see. Well, we won't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so it let's, it's one, two for the river and three to leave. I still got one extra movement point cost and I got greedy. Because uh, I thought, oh, I could just hop on over here, forward, because it's clear terrain and I don't have to pay the entrance to enter enemy zone of control. But damn it, I'm leaving this guy's enemy zone of control. Shit. Okay, so that's not going to work. It was close. It's these woods. I wanted, wanted the... Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to put him here. So if I go to here, let's, let's move on the artillery here. It doesn't exist yet. Uh, still going to have to pay that effing extra. Okay. One. Oh, I think I can do it actually. So that's one to get in here. <laughs> to get in here because it's clear or broken. It only costs me one movement point. <clears throat> the only difference between clear and broken is that broken gives uh, the defenders a little bit of a bonus. So I get one point here, uh, one movement. Two, three, four. I could do it. Good. That's even going to make me look like I'm even going more towards that way maybe. Okay, I can deal with that. So anyways, that's, like I said, I'm gonna, I can swing these guys in one turn right to here. It seems weird, but I mean, you know, I'm, just, I'm going with it. I'll say it was on the first day and three days later <laughs> in the turn. <laughs> and we'll swing them on over here and then these guys go to here and then we're going to do uh, uh, mount attacks that way. That's the way I'm doing it. Like I said, uh, yeah, I think that's about it really. Like I just I just said, I'm not sure if he was trying to model that, then why can't I also have that uh, be, be exempt from leaving an enemy zone of control? That's like I'm scratching my head with that one. Other than that, I've got a ton of, like I said, uh, I've got a ton of uh, strength points to pop in here. This, I haven't done them yet. Um, the Ninth Army HQ, I've got to pop it now. I just have never had to deal with so many uh, supply points when I had Alberto markers. This this little dude has got 57. 57. Um, oh my God, you want to know his name, I think? If it is, I'm going to freak. Scream. Because he was mentioned in the war summary today. I was like, what? Holy F he is. <laughs> He's mentioned massively. Anyways, I promoted this guy. Uh, this is uh, Von Bernardi. And as far as I know, Friedrich Von Bernardi 
uh, he was part of the mastermind for, for that, or part of it anyways. I think he helped out. I'll have to take go take a look. Oh my God, that's so weird. I'm, I, well, I just finished doing the war summary. I'm so happy I get to do it a day in advance. Due to the fact I can now focus on other aspects of the live stream, I still don't, like, still not spending enough time on, on this. <sighs> I, I want to, I just don't. Like, I mean, this is in, what I mean is the live stream. Because it's, I want to do a much, much, much better quality job of it. Anyways, um, whoa, that's just such a freak out. Yep, I can talk. I talk here. I could talk from here to tomorrow. It doesn't really matter. I'm now gonna just uh, start partitioning an obscene amount of uh, strength points down there, and I think there's a good chance we can pierce uh, that spot. Like I said, it's going to be trying to tell the other side um, we're not focused there. I mean, who, why would you think we were going to be doing there when I got all my artillery over there? Mind you, why would you think I've got my artillery on a railhead? Mm, you may think I'm up to something funky. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's a long time away. But, uh, and yeah, well, you know what sucks? It's going to be a long time away until I get to play this game. I got so many other, I've uh, got to make sure all the other, um, you know, other um, conflict zones and whatnot are, are primed and ready. And then I've got to still do my uh, extension grand campaign rules. I still have to figure out a lot of the grand campaign rules. Then all the moving parts can click and I can start just losing my freaking marbles. But I'll say this, even when I was walking back from the shops this afternoon, uh, I just realized uh, my head is just being hammered with ha happiness, man. It's just been absolutely fantastic. This has just been, well, this is my never-ending story, let's be honest. I'm not, uh, this is my primary game, my primary narrative, it's my primary everything. Um, I'm going to play this game out till I uh, essentially um, die. That's it. It's I. That's it. I hope it would be nice to get close to the end of the war. I don't know if that'll happen. We'll see what happens. All right. Hope you're having a good one.